This is Nerd World Problems. Things that matter to awesome people. Attack of the Cyberman shows just how far producer John Nathan Turner has come during his tenure. In season 18, there are no returning monsters, although the Master is successfully reintroduced at the climax of that season. Here we launch the series with a continuity-laden Cyberman story. Not only that, but it's based on continuity from stories that at the time were not available on home video, and some of them didn't even exist in the BBC archives. Attack at the very least goes some way to explain many of the references it makes, to the point where it is not really that different from any other narrative world building, although it's oddly specific about particular details and relatively oblivious to whether it's actually interesting or not. Sadly, a lot of this is delivered primarily in expository dialogue, but not gratuitously. It isn't fan service, it's just a bit wrapped up in its own lore. Which is fan service, I suppose. I can see why it may have been a bit overwhelming for some, especially as a season opener. The Cyberman lore is something of a smokescreen to their relatively uncomplicated plan to use a time machine to divert Halley's Comet into the Earth and avert the destruction of Mondas. The Doctor's character is kind of sidelined here and overshadowed by the presence of the Cybermen. He's a lot calmer now, but he's still quite brash, this transition isn't really explained at all, and there's not really any exploration of this new persona, well, at all. I do kind of wonder how this story might have worked in terms of being the introduction to this new Doctor, rather than the Twin Dilemma. There is room for it if you cut down the chameleon circuit gags, running around London, and the Bates and Stratton subplot, which despite being well executed and performed, ultimately doesn't really go anywhere. The return of the Cybermen, and Lytton for that matter, may well have helped to bridge the transition and give the new Doctor a chance to prove himself. Lytton, who is actually a fleshed out character in this story, is a great addition, and would have made a fascinating moralistic parallel to set this new Doctor on his journey. Attack, whilst not as consistently entertaining as Earthshock in terms of its plot, tension and intrigue, does feature some great moments surrounding the Cybermen themselves. From the simple snapping in half of Lytton's gun, to crushing his hands and converting him, for the first time in a long time, the real horror of their original concept comes to the fore, and has seldom been seen since, at least not as graphically. Added to that, their effective invasion of Telos and subjugation of the Cryons is interesting, even if the visuals don't quite live up to expectation. The tombs, for example, look like council house flats, a far cry from their original visualisation. At the time, remember, Tomb of the Cybermen was lost, with very little visual reference remaining, so no effort was made to recreate the visuals from that story. Whilst not all that impressive to begin with, in hindsight, now that we have the video and the DVD, it only emphasises just how underwhelming the attack sets are. As mentioned, the Bates and Stratton subplot does nothing for the overall story. It is an interesting exploration of when conversion goes wrong, they are great characters and great actors, and it's an entertaining insight into the effects of the Cybermen conversion process. Similarly, the rogue Cybermen are pretty cool, make some pretty good Cybermen on Cybermen action scenes, it's a shame they don't play too big a part in the plot overall. They are purely incidental. As a result, it's up to the Doctor to take the direct and mortal action to halt the Cybermen's plans, hence the controversy surrounding the Sixth Doctor's killing of the Cyber Controller. People seem to conveniently forget that the Fifth Doctor did the very same three years earlier to the Cyber Leader in Earthshock, and to a much more aggressive extent. He grinds Adric's badge into his chest unit, the gold suffocating him, and then the Doctor shoots him repeatedly in the chest with his own gun. It seems to only be when discussed in the context of the Sixth Doctor doing it that it becomes another stick to beat the character with. Really looking at it objectively, the Sixth Doctor's attack on the Cyber Controller was more justified than the Fifth's. There is definitely more imminent jeopardy. Overall, Attack of the Cybermen has lots of great elements and ideas, but they just don't really add up to a great deal. The Doctor's character arc appears to have been forgotten, apart from his persona is now a little bit calmer, and he's becoming something of a tinkering mechanic, which doesn't really go any further than this story. So there is little to dispel concerns of a cautious audience or win back their trust. Perhaps therefore it's not so surprising that the death of the Cyber Controller sticks in the mind above all else. I hope you've enjoyed this episode by episode analysis of The Sixth Doctor. Please let me know your thoughts about the character in the comment section below, and if you want to see more videos like this. In the meantime, please check out my blog, Nerd World Problems, at drtripod.wordpress.com, where you can find typed up versions of each of these episodes.